the God that made the world and all things therein. God is the creator. The Bible is consistent in that message. In the book of Genesis, uh, we read that God created the heavens and the earth and that he created man upon it. And the whole of the scripture record is consistent in this. In the prophecy of Isaiah uh, and chapter 45, uh, the prophet Isaiah says, Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 12, verse 12, I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens and all their host have I commanded. And verse 18 goes on to say, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. So God created the heavens and the earth for a purpose. He created man upon it, that he might reflect the glory of God. He was made in the image and likeness of God, and that the earth might be filled with God's glory. <laughs> But man disobeyed, and that obedience was called sin, and we all sin in the sight of God. In fact, it got so bad at one stage that the whole earth was filled with violence, and so God destroyed the earth with a flood. And just as we are all descended from Adam and Eve, we're also all descended from Noah, which was the one family that was preserved in the time of the flood. In the uh, Paul, in the second letter of Peter, uh, in chapter three and verse six, we read, the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. So God judged that generation uh, and they all perished. But after the flood, God said that he would never destroy the earth again with a flood. And, but still man was disobedient. And God expects us to be obedient and to be grateful for the great blessings we have received from him. So in that Acts chapter 17 that we read together, we have Paul talking about God as the great creator, expecting that everybody should appreciate the blessings received from him. Verse 28 of Acts chapter 17 says, for in him we live and move and have our being. A certain also of your own poets have said, we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think of the Godhead as being like to gold or silver or oak, stone, graven by art and man's device. We ought not to be worshipping idols. At the times of this ignorance, God winked at. He just turned a blind eye, as it were. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. He expects us to be obedient to him. And so he goes on to say in verse 31, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. And that man is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say, he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men. He's given grounds of faith to all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. Jesus, the Son of God, was obedient in all things. He never sinned. And when he died, he had lived 
a sinless life. And so God raised him from the dead. But he is the one who is going to judge the world in righteousness. The world is disobedient to God. And the world is going to be judged. The Psalms speak of this judgment of God. In Psalm 96, one of the uh, Psalms that praises God uh, for his greatness. And that's what God expects from us. He expects us to be grateful for the blessings received. Uh, Psalm 96 and verse 10 says, Say among the heathen, the nations, that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people <coughs> righteously. God is going to judge the world. He's going to judge the people righteously. And those who have sinned are going to be uh, taken out of the way. Verse uh, 12 of Psalm 96. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. And so God is going to judge righteous judgment. And he's chosen the Lord Jesus Christ as the judge of that time. You've got similar words at the end of Psalm 98. Uh, Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. So God is going to judge righteous judgment, not as the nations as they are at present. There is no justice in the world in which we live. The unrighteous are exalted and the righteous are persecuted in the world in which we live. But when God brings the Lord Jesus Christ to judge the world and the wicked will be punished and the righteous will be blessed. Indeed that's spoken of in connection with the judgment in Psalm 9. The ninth Psalm uh, speaks of the fact that God is going to judge the world. Psalm 9 and verse 8 he says, he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. So the wicked won't be able to get away with it anymore, as they do at the present time. The wicked will be judged by the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse uh, two, 9 goes on to say that. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. That righteous judgment will not only mean that the wicked will be punished, but those that are weak are going to be protected. He'll be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And so, although God will judge the world and the wicked will be punished, there's a, a great good side to it. Because those that obey God were going to be blessed by God. They are going to be, that the weak are going to be protected. Verse 10 of Psalm 9 And they that know thy name, will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. And so Jesus, the Bible tells us, is going to come back to the earth. He's going to judge the world in righteousness. The wicked 
are going to be judged, but he's going to establish peace and righteousness in the earth. Uh, last psalm that we're going to look at is Psalm 72, which speaks of the glorious nature of the kingdom of God. This is going to be established upon the earth. Uh, Psalm 72 and verse 2, he says, He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. So the poor will get justice in the kingdom when Jesus rules. Verse 7, in his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. What a glorious time is coming on the earth. Let us rejoice in this great hope that God has given to us. God will indeed judge the world. But when Jesus comes, he will establish his kingdom. And those that are righteous will be blessed. And so it's up to us now to be obedient to the word of God. So that when Jesus comes, we may be able to join with him. Because verse 19 of Psalm 72 says, Blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. God will indeed judge the world, but it will be with righteousness, and it's going to fill the earth with God's glory. What a glorious prospect for those that put their trust in him. Thank you.